What is up everybody? I've been getting a lot of questions about hand speed and machine speed and how to know if you have a perfect mixture of the two. So in this video, I'm going to break down the difference between the two and how to know if you have everything set up correctly. If you're new to this channel, I'm Brandon from Tattooing 101 and make sure you're liking and subscribing down below and hit that little bell notification so you can keep up to date on all the new videos we make. So let's get into hand speed and the machine speed so you can know if you are running everything correctly. So I always recommend to people whenever you are first starting out to start out on a voltage about a seven. Okay, so we're gonna set it at a seven on my machine, which I'm used to running a little bit faster, but I'm gonna show you in this video the difference between the two and how you could kind of tell if it's working for you. So I'm gonna tattoo at the same hand speed as I normally do when I'm tattooing. Now this is set way lower than I normally would. It's set at about a six right now. So if I use the same hand speed whenever I'm tattooing, you can see that it's not as dark, it's kind of light, and when you go through healing, this is just gonna come out almost completely because it's not perfectly saturated. You can tell that it's light, and that's going to have issues with healing. So whenever you are first starting out, you want to get used to how your hand speed is in retrospect to your voltage. So if you have a hand speed that's super slow and you're running your machine, too high. Let's set it at about uh, eight right now. So I'm going to set it at an eight and run it really, really slow like I was first starting out and didn't really understand how fast to go. Right like this. What's going to happen is it's going to oversaturate the area, which it looks really nice and saturated, but you could see that it actually cut into the fake skin. See, it made a slash in there because it ran way too many times over the skin, so it just pretty much made a tear. And if you're working on actual human beings, that could cause a lot of issues with healing and just really butchering someone up. So there's the two polar opposites. This is with a, a fast hand speed with a slow voltage and a slow hand speed with a fast voltage. Obviously, if you're wanting to do one of these, it's way easier to fix up a fast hand speed on a slow voltage. So you always want to start out slow. And then from there, if you are having issues with it looking that way and you know it's still not saturated, what you can do is slow down your hand speed. So I still have it set really low. All you have to do is Instead of doing my regular hand speed, just slow it down a little bit. Just like we did on the fast one. And what that's going to do is perfectly saturate that area. So I have my hand speed locked in to about a six voltage right here. And this is something that does come with trial and error because depending on how fast your hand speed is in retrospect to how fast your machine is running will change the way that you tattoo. And the different styles that you tattoo will change dramatically depending on what you're doing. So say I'm doing stippling, I'm gonna turn my machine way, way down to the lowest voltage I possibly can and do a quick hand speed because I want it to not be saturated like this. I wanna see little dots. Now if I'm doing more of a thick liner, I'm going to want to jump my voltage up a little bit and slow down my hand speed because it's kind of hard for a thick liner to be pushed into the skin. So there's a couple different things that you'll have to practice with when it comes to learning these things, but the best thing to do is start out slow. So I recommend to start out at about a six or a seven and then work on getting your hand speed perfectly for that. So I'm at a seven voltage right now and I know exactly where my hand speed needs to be in order to make a perfectly saturated line. Right like this. And you can see that it's not ripped up, it didn't cause too much trauma to the fake skin, so that is exactly what we want to look for. And I recommend you definitely use either Franken skins or real skins when it comes to this, because if you do it the wrong way, you're going to really mess up someone's skin. And then when you progress and get more comfortable tattooing, 
the one thing you could do is jump up to a faster voltage. If you just feel like you're going too slow and it's not comfortable for the way that you tattoo, I'll show you how to do that. So when you are practicing on this, I wouldn't recommend doing it on an actual design just because it could re be really hard to try to, you know, tone everything in. So I recommend doing a couple lines on a piece of fake skin, not following a design by any means. So let's jump it up to about an eight. So this is normally what I've been, I would use to tattoo an 8.5 to a nine. So whenever I'm running it this fast, my hand speed is, you know, really, really fast, which I learned how to tattoo this way. So not everyone's going to want to be able to tattoo this way, but I'm going to show you how I learned and what's most comfortable for me. Cause sometimes going super slow just doesn't work for me. Um, it just feels really uncomfortable for how I tattoo. So turning it up, and then just focusing on whatever hand speed you're comfortable with. Right like that. So that's about exactly where I would tattoo. That's what I'm comfortable doing. And that's how I tattoo every single day of my life. Right there is my hand speed. So you could check it out then. Make sure you go in and look at everything. You could see that it is not cut open at all. Um, it's not undersaturated. So my hand speed is dialed into my voltage right here. So that's what you want to look for. If it's undersaturated, that means you need to slow down your hand speed. If it's cut up and you could tell that it would have been blown out or something like that on the fake skins, that means you need to speed up your hand speed. And if for some reason you can't do a perfect line or stay on your stencil going that hand speed, that means you need to turn down your voltage. That's you're just not ready to upgrade at that point. You know, you have to focus on going over all the lines perfectly. So having a slower hand speed helps out with that because it'll get you more comfortable being able to go through and doing all of these different lines, especially like circles or straight lines. It can be really hard to do that with like a fast voltage because of you know how fast you're going without being able to pay attention more with all of those things. If you have found this video helpful and you would like to be mentored by artists like me and other mentors from Tattooing 101, I left a link underneath this video for you. Inside our Artist Accelerator program, we break down step by step how to tattoo from start to finish, even if you are just a beginner. So if you're tired of trying to figure out everything on your own and want to skip years of trial and error to become a professional tattoo artist, I recommend you check it out. So this is the difference between your hand speed and machine speed. Leave a comment down below which is the worst and hardest thing for you to learn. Would it be your hand speed or your machine speed? And any other questions that you have, if you want me to go more in depth on this subject, and if you would like to see other things involving this, leave a comment down below. I'll check them out and make a video for you guys. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day.